Hello everybody, this is Dr. Lori Langdon, board certified pediatrician, mom to six and grandmother to two, coming to you today with a video about Christmas tips. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I've made one. We've been busy decorating and, and celebrating Thanksgiving, and now we can officially jump into Christmas. And as many pediatricians who are a little bit extra, you know I have enough outfits to last all the way through till Christmas, because I think the kids like it. So I just wanted to have uh, some time to share with you about tried and true wisdom, and then what I found in my own personal life around some quick Christmas tips. So number one is around the holidays, a lot of times we're traveling and families with young children, mine aren't young anymore, but are traveling, staying in other people's homes. Remember that their home may not be as child-proofed as yours, so be really careful about things that could be in that house that your child could put in their mouth. Our, my, my current top two uh, unfavorite things are water beads and especially lithium coin batteries. They're really evil. So be careful that you don't accidentally bring them into your house. Also be careful if you're the one hosting and people are coming into your home, especially elderly people, they may have arthritis and not be able to leave the childproof locks on their pill bottles and make sure that if they've left their purse down where a child could get into it, that you're watching the child constantly or that you encourage them to put the childproof safety on or put it up where the child can't reach it. I honestly don't even trust those things sometimes because some kids can get into them even when they are supposed to be child-proofed. So please be careful about having company when you're hosting and then going other places because there are a lot of choking hazards out there and some homes aren't as child-proofed as yours. The next one is, I want you to try to think of when you're buying gifts for uh, families with young children and for young children themselves to Think of things that help the child develop and help the child use its imagination and its brain and encourages fine motor skills. So you can never go wrong with toys that they have to work. So blocks, books, uh, Duplos or Legos, depending on their age, uh, things that encourage creativity and that don't do all the work for them. If it's one of those toys where you just push a button and it does everything, that's really not what we're going for in the way of toys. Now, if it's something that they can exercise with, balls are always good, uh, slides and various things like that, that's absolutely fine. But we do wanna be careful since we don't recommend any form of screen time in children under two, remember that's an American Academy of Pediatrics recommendation, well then you wouldn't wanna get them some sort of like pretend small TV or pretend small smartphone or pretend tablet. Oh, it's certainly not an actual tablet. Come on, you guys, no screen time under two. It's not that hard, is it? And yet I see so many kids from great sweet families on their screen time all the time when they're in the office. So please remember that. Number three, we really don't blame sugar for behavioral changes even though that's a culturally popular idea. So people are always saying, oh, you can tell they've had too much sugar today and they're just wild and crazy. No, it's because their routines are off, their schedules are off. Suddenly they're allowed to eat candy at nighttime after supper, like on Halloween for instance. And so they're all running around wild on Halloween night. That's because they got to put on a costume and go outdoors and trick or treat and get candy. And they were allowed to eat candy right at bedtime. And that's just weird. They know that their routine, their structure, their schedule, it's all off. What's well, the same for Christmas? It's not that they're over consuming candy, although you can literally get a stomach ache from over consuming candy. I hope you know that that's not just a myth. That part's not a myth. Uh, but the behavioral changes are from a lack of structure and limits and bedtimes and routines. So I know it's hard when you're traveling, but if you can try to roughly, don't be a complete jerk about it, but if you can roughly keep them around the same bedtime, around the same wake up time, around the same nap times, you can be a little bit flexible, but not a huge amount flexible, then that can help the child have better behaviors throughout these holiday seasons if they're still having their normal routines. That can be helpful. Now, we touched on a screen time as in zero under two just now, but we didn't talk about children owning their own smartphone. So the American Academy of Pediatrics has a big campaign to really push not having their own smartphone until they're in the eighth grade. And even then, there should be parental monitors so that you can make sure you know uh, which sites they're going to, what they're figuring out, what they're learning so that you can help guide and protect them when they're having uh, unlimited exposure these days on smartphones. And most parents don't limit their child's smartphone activities or are not even aware of them. So we recommend no smartphones for kids until they're in the eighth grade. 
Now this next one is just a personal philosophical thing, but you know the young people these days, they are all about encouraging, and it's not wrong, it's great, encouraging activities instead of things. And certainly we live in a materialistic world and certainly it's easy to get caught up in that during the holiday season, and I'm aware of that. However, you guys, if you are parents of young children, there is nothing more magic than five and under at Christmas and opening presents and getting toys that they wanted and love and treasure. So I do not want you to be so stuck on, no, we must only give our children tickets to the zoo or tickets to the museum. Those things are great. But if they're five and under, oh, for crying out loud, let them open some presents. It's so fun. There will be nothing more fun in your life. And I can tell you that now because I'm old. And remembering back when the kids were younger, those Christmases were the most magical ever. So don't worry if your house feels full of toys. It's okay because here's the sad truth. It's temporary. They're growing up so fast, you guys. They'll be teenagers soon and they won't care about getting baby dolls and toy kitchens and all the wonderful things that made their childhood so fun and magical at Christmas time. So just go for it. If the grandparents are trying to give your kids toys and they're not dangerous, they're not screens, they don't have lithium coin batteries, let them. It's just enjoy it. Let everybody have a good time. It's okay. It's Christmas, I promise. And then, okay, I've also had teenagers in my life. I actually still do have three. <laughs> and this is absolute wisdom right here. Listen to me. Never buy your teenage child clothes unless they are with you. And then even if they are with you, only expect them to wear them even once, maybe 50% of the time, because remember those clothes are tainted because you are the one that purchased them and you are so utterly uncool. It would be nearly impossible for clothes you purchased to be actually wearable in public. So please be careful. Don't buy teenagers clothes. Pretty much it's just easier to get them a gift card to a clothes store they like. So then they feel responsible for purchasing it, purchasing it and then maybe they'll be more likely to actually wear it and use it. That's truth right there. Now don't, forget that even if you do have older kids or teens like I do, or even adult children, sometimes they still like toys. So it's possible that this Christmas, an 18-year-old and a 24-year-old are both getting pretty nice Lego sets, but they ask for them. And I just love that. If we can prolong some childhood magic, I am all for it. So don't forget, sometimes adults like toys too, and that's okay. Absolutely. Now, another trick we used when the kids were younger was we would get these catalogs. Now, you remember when we were children, we had Sears and Roebuck catalogs, and we could circle the things we wanted. We didn't necessarily get them, but it was still fun to circle and dream, right? Well, we've had various catalogs throughout the year, and we let the kids do that, too. And we didn't necessarily order exactly what they circled from the catalog, but it at least gave us an idea of what they liked, what they wanted. And they had a blast trying to pick and choose. And I can remember when ours were younger, there were so many of them. Uh, there would be circles around lots of different things, and then they would write their initials beside the circle. So we were sure to know exactly which child wanted which item. So that was kind of fun too. So circling in a catalog is still a fun thing to do for the kids and it gives the parents some clues to help with which purchases you should do. Now, I asked one of my adult children who's a third grade teacher what she likes for teacher gifts. You know, this time of year, everybody's struggling to try to figure out teacher gifts. Now, she didn't mean it had to be expensive, but she said, Okay, well, first she said alcohol, but then she felt like it would be uncomfortable to have third graders hand her alcohol. And so then she changed her answer to uh, restaurant gift cards. So uh, please do as you feel led. If you know your child's teacher uh, more personally and know exactly what they like, what flavor of candy or whatnot, absolutely go for it. And they would be very grateful. But if you don't, it's almost always a good idea to get a restaurant gift card. Who couldn't use, you know, a night when they didn't have to cook? after taking care of your children all day. So she said she would very much appreciate restaurant gift cards, but you know, you can get them down to just $5 Starbucks or whatever, $10 for wherever. So you can get those in any denomination and they would be greatly appreciated. Now, the last one is just a sweet little tip, and we've tried to do this when the kids were younger. We haven't actually succeeded as much lately, but there has been a stupid pandemic and that really dented this idea. But in years when there's not a pandemic, and in years when your children are currently healthy, I cannot tell you, there is no way to describe the enormity of a blessing it would be 
for your family to visit shut-ins or elderly, um, loved ones in your family, great-grandparents, things like that, especially with the children. It brings such a light and happiness and warmth. Now, it wouldn't be nearly as fun if your child was infected with flu A or RSV, which we're seeing in astronomical proportions right now, at least in my part of the country. So as long as your children are healthy, visiting an elderly loved one or a shut-in can really teach the child the true uh, meaning of Christmas, compassion and love, and um, showing love to other people. So I would really encourage you to do that as a family tradition, as long as everyone's healthy. And um, in my case, my children still resent it because, you know, of course I had to be extra and I made them sing Christmas carols. So we like to go caroling in our neighborhood and sometimes with the church and sometimes just on our own as a family to elderly loved ones and sing Christmas carols to them. In fact, I even suggested this year, you know, now our age ranges are the youngest is 17. The oldest has moved out of state now. So we're just 17 through 24 right now, but they didn't go for my idea this year, but we'll see if I can convince them. So please visit elderly loved ones and by doing that, you're blessing them and teaching your children. Hope you guys got some good tips you could use out of this.